Hi there, today I'm going to be walking you through the bulk merging Python script that is used to merge Marketo duplicates. Before I jump into this, there is a guru card with all the resources you need, as well as all the fields that we compare when merging. And before watching this particular video, I highly recommend watching the first video, Automatic Merging Zap, where I go through a lot of the merging logic that's used and I explain a lot of the Python code already. So I won't repeat any of this explanation. So you'll have to go to this video to find it. So the first thing to do is go to the possible duplicate smart list in the database in Marketo and make sure that you create a list view, call it duplicate. And in this list view, make sure you have all 36 fields that are mentioned in this guru card present. So include all the fields here, click save, and then apply this duplicate list view when you're exporting all the leads. So go export this list and then just choose visible columns when it comes up and it asks you um, how many columns you want to export, choose visible, and then that will export all the duplicate leads with these 36 fields. And another thing worth mentioning is I do have this blog post on my personal blog that has some useful flow diagrams that will help you understand the Python script that I'm about to go through. So have a read of this blog post as well to gain a general understanding before watching this video too, or you can read this post afterwards. A lot of the stuff in here is simplified, whereas in this video, I'll go a bit more nitty gritty into the code as I did in the previous video. And all the code I'm about to go through here is in this GitHub repo till next bulk merging. So you can get all the code you need in here. And finally, let's start going through the code. So this is the main merging script. It is the bulk merge main that's here in GitHub. And the very first thing we do is we use the pandas library to read in the CSV file that we just exported from Marketo. And then the first thing we do is, is we rename all the headers in this CSV file. So when Marketo exports the CSV, it uses the field labels like ID, Marketo SFDC ID, um, SFDC type. But what we need for this script is to have all those column headers in the Marketo REST API field names. So this step just renames all the columns to be the API names instead of the field labels. The next part of this toInt function is necessary because some integers like the behavior score seven day when it reads them in, when Marketo exports it and we read them into this Python script, they are formatted as floats or doubles. That is, they have decimal points. And later on, if we try to upload these decimal values to the behavior score seven day field, it would throw an error because the behavior seven, behavior score seven day field is an integer and it won't accept double values. So we need to convert all these double values to integers. And that's what this first function does. There's a bit of manipulation that goes on first where we fill all NA values with minus one. We convert them all to an int. We convert them all to string and then we replace the minus one string with not a number again. So this is all just a bit of hacking to get the behavior score seven day field to get all its values into integers. In this case, there wasn't really a need to use a for loop because there's only one field in int fields. Whereas in other ones, a for loop is more useful because we've got many fields that we need to update. So it makes sense to use this for loop structure. The next one is to convert all the timestamps in this raw list to UTC timestamps. So when Marketo exports all these dates, it exports them in central time. And you can see it just exports it in a kind of 
user-friendly, human-friendly date format. But what we really need, so I'll run to the next breakpoint here. What we really need is we need these timestamps to be in UTC time, first of all. So it's plus five or six hours from central time. And then we need it to be in this TZ format too. And that's what this function here does, the two UTC. So in this case, there's two columns, which values need to be updated. And this for loop will iterate through both of them. And then there's again, some hacking in order to, um, in order to convert all the timestamps in these columns to be UTC timestamps. And then once we do that, we replace all NAT values with none. And jumping out here again, the reason we've got another line here that's going to replace all um, NAN values in this data frame with the Python keyword none, because this is just easier for us to use in Python rather than using NAN. So although we have this line here, it didn't seem to be working on the date and timestamp columns that were formatted by this function. So that's why I explicitly convert the NAT um, values in these date and time stamp columns to none because it wasn't being done by this line here. Okay, and then the final part of this is to Boolean. And this to Boolean function needs to be after the conversion of all the NAN values to none. Because if you were to put this function before this conversion on line 22, then every column, every column that was meant to be converted will just have true values and only true values. That's because all the NAN values would be misinterpreted. However, when we run this function first and we have the none values present, all the empty values will be converted to false as desired. So just to show you what I mean, if we go to some subscribed fields, Marketo first of all has them as ones, which it shouldn't, it should have them as true or false. But then if we try to do the Boolean conversion with all these NAN values, it would turn these NAN values also into true. However, when we do this Boolean function after converting all these NAN values to none, then they correctly go to false values as we want. So in the two Boolean function, we have all the Boolean columns that we want to update. And then we iterate through them. And then this very simple line here converts the columns to Boolean. So wherever there's, wherever there's a one, it'll convert it to true. And wherever there's none or any N, it'll convert it to false. So just to show you what happens after you run the raw list one, let me go back in. We look for unsubscribed. We see everything's now one or none. And then when two Boolean runs, it converts all the ones to true and all the nones to false. This line then converts this data frame into a Python dictionary. So it goes from being in this format. Let me run the next line. to being in a dictionary format. And you'll notice here that it's not ordered by email address yet. And for the logic later on, we need to have successive, we need to have the records in order of email address. So that's what this next step does. It sorts this whole dictionary by the email address key. So let's do that. So notice here, the email addresses aren't sorted. And then we run this next line. Okay. 
So after running this line here, we can then see that this dictionary that we've created is now sorted by email address which is important for the logic as we'll see later on then we specify a template structure for our field dictionary and then we create an exact replica for final dictionary which will have the exact same keys as field dictionary that's just what this line does and then we start a log file and I'll show you later on what a typical log file looks like after it's run through a few merges. We set remaining equal to zero for the first time. It goes through this evaluation here. And the limit, that is how many iterations we want to do, is equal to the length of this raw list. That is the number of duplicates we need to merge. So then here we say, well, i is less than limit. Basically, well, there are more duplicates to merge and time.sleep remaining. This will become a bit more clear after I explain this logic and some of the logic at the very end of the while loop. But we say count equal to zero. Count is basically how many iterations we do in one iteration of the outer while loop. We set the start time equal to the current time, we get the access token, well, we call the get token function. And this get token function will return the token value and when it expires. And we store those two values in these two variables. And then the remaining time is equal to how long the token has left minus the current time minus when we started. And then when we, when we come to the end of one iteration, when we break out of the inner for loop, so we're gonna iterate through here for line So after each iteration of this inner while loop, once we've merged the lead and updated the lead, we're then going to sleep for 0 0.2 seconds. And the reason for this is Marketo has a concurrency limit. And this concurrency limit is 100 calls in 20 seconds. So if you divide 20 seconds by 100, you get 0.2. So this delay is to stop us running into concurrency issues. And then this final part says, this gets the remaining time left of the token. So in this example, if expires, which we got from up the top here, if the token life minus the time that has elapsed, that is the current time minus the start time, is less than zero, we're just going to set it equal to zero because sometimes this can happen. Because it might be the current time minus the start time might be less than expires before the loop iteration completes. But then once the loop completes, this time elapsed could now be greater than expires. So that's how that could happen. Else, it's just equal to expires the token life minus the time that has elapsed. So that's what this logic does. And then we go back up to the top and we do another evaluation. We say, well, there are more duplicates to merge and that remaining time is greater than 60 seconds. Then come in and do another iteration of the inner while loop. But if remaining is less than 60 seconds, we're going to come back to the outer while loop. We're going to sleep, that is we're going to delay for however long is left on the token life. So it might be 45 seconds or something. We're gonna wait for those 45 seconds to elapse. And then we're going to request a new access token and then repeat the whole process over again. So that's how the embedded while loops work um, to take into account the token life and the expiration of the token life. And once we're in the inner while loop, 
we then create a new field dictionary and final dictionary from these templates up above. So they'll have all the keys we need for all the field values being compared when merging. And then we use the append dict function to append the first or the index at i from raw list to the field dictionary. So in this case, it's going to append this dictionary to field dict and the append dictionary function looks like this. It just goes through every key in the lead dictionary and it adds this lead dictionary value for this key to the master dictionary under the exact same key. So I can show you what that looks like. We'll run the code a bit. So we're now at this line in the code. So currently field dictionary is empty. We're going to run this line. And now field dictionary gets populated with that very first value from raw list, as we can see here. And then we have a while loop that says we're going to set j equal to i plus one. So we're going to look at the next index in raw list. And while the email address at this next index equals the email address from the first index, then call the append function and add the values from this next row to the field dictionary. So currently we can see that field dictionary is just filled with one leads values. But then if we go through this while loop, you'll see that field dict is now filled with two values for these two duplicate leads. And then it doesn't run through the while loop again. So this is why it's important up above here. Um, where is it? This is why it's important up above to sort the dictionary by email address, because this logic down here depends on the emails being in consecutive order for this to work. So we use the append dict function, append dict functionary, append dict, append dictionary function to add all the dictionary rows for successive email addresses to the field dict dictionary. And then we set i equal to j at the end, just because that will help us in the next iteration of the for loop. Because the next time we come in, we don't need to start at index one, we need to start at index two for the next duplicate. So that's why we set i equal to j in this instance. And then I explained this logic in my first Loom video, so I won't go through it again, but basically, for each value in field dictionary, for each key or each field name, we're going to go through this for loop and all these conditional statements to see what the winning field value should be for each field. And then we're going to store that winning field value in final dictionary, which is currently empty. So I'll run through all of this up until this point. So after we run through all these conditional statements, we'll then have the winning field value obtained from field dictionary. We'll compare all these field values and then we'll obtain final dictionary, which contains the winning field value for each of the fields. And then we update our log with some information about the winning and losing leads and then the winning lead information. And then we create a list containing all the lo loser IDs. So that's just the field dictionary IDs and we remove the winning ID, which is stored in final dictionary. So these are all the loser IDs. And then we call the merge function to merge the two, three or four leads together. And I go through the logic of this merge function in my first video, so I won't go through it here again. 
And then once merged, if the merge failed, then we just close the, the log file and we'll go to the next iteration of the inner while loop to evaluate the next duplicate pair or combination. Else if, this, else if the merge was successful, then we need to update the winning lead with the winning field values that we've stored in final dictionary. And then that's what this step does. And I explain the logic behind why we have this inner while loop here. It's basically a fallback mechanism, but I won't go into that. I won't go through that here because it's mentioned in the previous video. So once we've updated the lead value with the final dictionary values, we then end this iteration of the inner while loop. We set count equal to count plus one. So this is a number of merges that we've completed. We sleep to avoid concurrency issues. And then we see how long is left of the token life. And then we're going to evaluate that again. And if it's greater than 60, we're going to do another iteration. Else, if it's less than 60, we're going to get a new token before jumping back into the inner while loop. And then this process will complete until all the duplicates that we've imported in our file here are merged. So there was a lot in this. Um, feel free, if you have any questions on how any of this Python code works, to comment um, in Loom at points in the video where you have your questions. And if you want to delve into a deeper conversation, feel free to jump into the Help Marketing Ops Slack channel and ask your questions there. Thanks very much.